AUBL Miami Baseball is on the air. Welcome everybody to beautiful FIU Baseball Stadium. I'm League President Jay Habak, along with my broadcast partner Justin Bresner. We have a great game for you this evening. What a treat. We have the West Kendall Nationals who are undefeated and the returning champions going against the South Florida Pirates and Justin this matchup a lot of people have been waiting for because the Pirates are the last team to beat the Nationals in a broadcast, which was last year right here at FIU Stadium. Well, if it's anything like the last two games the West Kendall Nationals have played, I can't wait to see it. That's why I'm back for a third time. Yeah, that's right, Justin. And, and boy, have the last two been great. You know, we've had the, the Nationals have been the, the star in each of those shows. Um, we've had the Nationals go against, the uh, last time was, of course, Team Venezuela in that great, exciting finish where Ricky Ibars hit that double in the, uh, in the last inning and, and almost uh, put Venezuela ahead. And then, um, of course, we had the, the Coral Gables A's go against the, the West Kennel Nationals, and that game was fantastic where uh, Anthony Bosa hit that two-run home run and Tony Cash, of course, uh, hit that game-winning double. Uh, to bring in the other two runs, and that was a close 4-3 game with great pitching and great defense. Um, but Justin, you know, let's get to this game tonight. Um, the uh, the West Kendall Nationals, you know, most of you who've been following our broadcast, you already know that the Nationals have, of course, last seasons and also the season before Cy Young Award winners. We've got Eric Berkowitz. Um, we've got Gabby Lorenzo. Most of you out there who've been following us, you know that the Nationals are always going to bring top pitching. You know that the Nationals are going to bring uh, heavy hitting, a lot of home run power. But uh, let's introduce everybody to the South Florida Pirates tonight. For those of you guys who haven't seen the Pirates this season, they have a little bit of a new look to them, but um, they have some familiar faces as well. Um, they've brought back, of course, our catcher Jeff Steiner. Um, you've got pitcher Kenny Tyson and, of course, uh, manager and pitcher Michael Rudman. And let's, let's talk first about Michael Rudman because he will be the story of tonight one way or the other, Justin. Michael Rudman is an AUBL Miami All-Star. He, he, he throws in the lower 90s. Um, in, the, in the playoffs last season, he had 16 strikeouts in the, uh, in the semifinals. Um, he can be a, a dominant, dominant pitcher, and if, if Rudman can can get it going tonight, uh, we may see a really tight ball game here. If the Nationals can get to Rudman early, um, and and the and the Pirates have to bring in Kenny Tyson, who is a, a great change of pace pitcher, um, you know that that could be uh, trouble for the Pirates. But um, I'm expecting a low-scoring game tonight with excellent pitching, Justin. Well, Rudman with 31 strikeouts and 24 innings pitched, I mean, that says it all right there. An ERA under one. This could easily be a pitcher's duel, Jay. You're absolutely right. But if you... Yeah, Justin, and uh, obviously the stats for all the pitchers tonight have been very good. Um, Rudman, Tyson for the, uh, the South Florida Pirates, and then uh, Lorenzo and Berkowitz for the Nationals. Although, I'll tell you, Tony Cash, the money man, actually pitched a pretty good game last week against the Dade Diamondbacks. Uh, Diamondbacks were able to put some runs up against the money man, but the money man pitched a, a gritty, gritty performance last week. Um, so, the, so the Nationals actually do have some other pitchers, too. Um, Anthony Rodriguez, their, their typical center fielder, also is an excellent pitcher. Um, so, and, and of course, your Randy Martinez, the blur, is also an excellent pitcher as well. So, um, you know, the, the Nationals do have a lot of pitching on their team, but when you've got the last two seasons Cy Young Award winners, it's really hard to, to break the rotation on the Nationals team. So that'll set the stage here at FIU Baseball Stadium. Again, I'm Jay Habak, league president, along with my broadcast partner, Justin Bresner. Uh, tonight's game should begin in approximately uh, 15 minutes. Um, home plate umpire, uh, Alan Sherwin, and, uh, and field umpire, uh, Dave Meyer Jr. are meeting at home plate right now, which you can see on your screen. Um, the players are taking their final warm-ups, and uh, they'll be exchanging lineups. 
and uh, we we will have action here at FIU, uh, assuming that the the weather cooperates. We did have a few showers earlier, um, but uh, the showers have cleared up. The sky looks good, and uh, we are we are looking good for baseball tonight. So uh, settle in, folks, and grab a cold beverage, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be bringing you some great action here tonight. Uh, again, game time should be in about 15 minutes, and uh, we will take a short break. Uh, tonight's game is brought to you by Prana Health. Prana Health is the place to go for sports injuries, for any type of cosmetics, uh, for Botox, um, any of those types of services. Prana Health is going to be, folks, where you want to go. Um, give them a call over there and uh, let them know that you heard about them from uh, AUBL Miami, and they will set you up with a free consultation. What's this number up here? I can never see it. One. That's it?
Okay, folks, welcome back. Again, Jay Habeck, League President, along with my broadcast partner, Justin Bresner. We are here live at FIU Stadium to bring you a great game tonight between the West Kendall Nationals and the South Florida Pirates. Justin, these, uh, these West Kendall Nationals, as you well know from your broadcast with us and, and most of our followers out there know, uh, the Nationals bring pitching, defense, and, uh, and of course, power hitting. And that's been their formula for success. They are back-to-back -back champions. They are 7-0 this season. And uh, even though they've played in a lot of close games, there haven't been any teams that have solved the puzzle yet. The Pirates are going to bring uh, Sean Emery is uh, coming up to bat here to start the game. And Eric Berkowitz fires the opening pitch low for a ball. And, and we are underway here at FIU Stadium. Sean Emery up for the South Florida Pirates. Grounder over to second base. Here's Busy Perez up with it and over to first. And he's off the bag. And unfortunately, Anthony Bosa could not make the tag there. And Sean Emery with that blazing speed, Justin, able to beat it out. Yeah, and that throw was just high and inside. And there was no way for the first baseman to bring that down and make the tag at the same time. Yeah, Busy Paredes looked like he came up with it pretty clean, so um, that really wasn't the issue. I think it was just uh, an errant throw. <laughs> Not the way the Nationals envisioned this game starting off, and now you've got a, a big time threat to steal in Emery over at first base. And of course the Nationals are well familiar with Sean Emery as these teams have played each other before. Um, and that'll that'll bring to the plate uh, Brian Netwig who also has been a big hitter for these South Florida Pirates. That pitch is in for a strike from Eric Berkowitz and that was a nice curveball, Justin. Emery goes and the throw is offline as Gil Garcia unable to get Sean Emery. And now with no outs in the inning, Brian Metwig up in an RBI opportunity. Curveball, fouled straight back by Netwig. Netwig stays alive with a two strike count. On deck is Bino Garcia. Bino, of course, a longtime member of AUBL Miami and uh, South Florida baseball in general. Fastball inside, Garcia unable to handle it, but Emery stays at second base. And that'll bring the count now to one and two on Brian Netwig. These, uh, these Pirates hitters coming up are pretty big hitters, Justin, so you don't want to get in trouble early. Big curveball in for strike three, and Eric Berkowitz gets his first out of the game on a curveball to Brian Netwig. As always, Berkowitz with many supporters here in the crowd. And that will bring up Trey Gleason. Bino Garcia, one of the top hitters in AUBL Miami. And you can see that big swing, Justin. Bino Garcia, of course, an all-star, an AUBL Miami all-star as well, as is Sean Emery. So the Pirates do have many all-stars on their team. Of course, their starting pitcher, Michael Rudman, an AUBL Miami all-star. Another curveball from Berkowitz. A beautiful strike. And Bino Garcia looking, looking at home plate umpire as if to say, are you serious?
And we have one out here in the top of the first inning. Eric Berkowitz on the mound for the West Kendall Nationals. Fires a fastball and Garcia fouls it off to the right side. And that will keep the count at 0-2. Berkowitz again getting ahead of the hitters. He was ahead of Sean Emery, he was ahead of Brian Netwig, and now he's ahead of Bino Garcia. I don't think he'll give him the fastball here, Justin. There's the pickoff move. It hits Emery, and it goes into center field. Here comes Emery to third base, and now with the one out, the South Florida Pirates all of a sudden with runner in scoring position on, at third base, and now... A sack fly, or may, maybe even possibly a ground ground ball, could score Emery from third base to push across the first run of the game here, Justin. Yeah, anything overhead towards the right field is going to probably knock that runner in from third. But we'll see. Uh, Berkowitz seems to be in control of his pitches tonight. Boy, two unfortunate plays to start the game here. First, uh, Busy Paredes unable to get the ball to Anthony Bosa at first base to start the game. And now, after a, a stolen base from Sean Emery, Berkowitz hits Emery with the ball on a pickoff attempt, and Emery now sits at third base with one out for Bino Garcia. Not an enviable position here for Eric Berkowitz. Strikes him out. Here's the throw to first base, and he is out at first. So on the strikeout, Eric Berkowitz now with two strikeouts in the inning. And Gil Garcia with a nice play to get the ball over to first base to complete the out there. And that'll bring up home run threat, Nick Silva. And boy, Nick, you know, Justin, when, when you have a guy like Nick Silva up at the plate with runners on, that is always uh, a tough situation. And you wanna be careful here. I mean, when you got first base open, and he gave him the fastball, and boy, did he swing through that one. You know, I would, I would be surprised if he gives him too many fastballs here. Silva hitting 300 on the season. Does not have any home runs this season, but is a major home run threat. As are many of these Pirates hitters. Another fastball right over the plate, and that's strike two. And again, Justin, just as we've seen, with the first three hitters, Eric Berkowitz getting ahead. Yeah, he sure is full control of his pitches once again tonight. Guy's just on fire every time I've watched him pitch. He just seems to get better and better. For those of you just joining us, welcome. We are in the top of the first inning with the South Florida Pirates threatening uh, with two outs, Sean Emery at third base. The West Kendall Nationals are in the field and have not hit yet. Eric Berkowitz on the mound. Here's the pitch and fouled into the ground. Nick Silva now again at 0-2. What is, what is Berkowitz gonna throw here, Justin? You know, you know Berkowitz's repertoire pretty good by now. I would say he's gonna try to paint that outside corner with a curveball coming up. I don't see him throwing another fastball. He's already ahead in the count. Is he gonna think... throw him a strike or is he gonna throw him a pitch that looks like a strike and make him fish for it? I think he's going, gonna make this guy go fishing. I think that's definitely his plan tonight. Inside Silva. Yeah. All right, I guess we were both wrong on that one. I, he might have been set, that might have been a setup pitch. So you know, sometimes to get the pitch you want, sometimes you got to get, get him off the plate a little bit. He might have moved so this, him inside to now throw outside. So this might be the one here. Look for that little slurvy pitch that Berkowitz throws. Change up, and again, Nick Silva pounds it into the ground. So a good at bat here for Nick Silva in the first inning. It's been a long inning, you know, even though uh, we've only had one runner, uh, it seems seems like this inning has gone on for quite a while. It sure is. Seems to be a matchup between a dominant pitcher and a contact hitter. We'll see what Silva's got in the bag for this pitch. Curveball in the dirt. Good eye from Nick Silva. And, and that's what we were saying. Move him inside to bring it back outside. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and now with a two and two count, Berkowitz now may be leaning towards the fastball a little bit, and that's where you can get in trouble with Nick Silva. Just like we've seen with these Nationals hitters. And there is the fastball, and it was inside and low, so now with a full count and two outs here in the top of the first inning, you've got Sean Emery on third base, who reached base after an error to start the game. And Nick Silva at the plate. Great confrontation here between Berkowitz and Silva. Curveball! Did he go? And Dave Meyer Jr. says no. And Nick Silva, with a great at bat, earns a walk. And that'll bring up Kenny Tyson for the Pirates. And although Kenny Tyson is an excellent pitcher, Justin, he is definitely one of their top hitters and a feared hitter at that. Yeah, not a great situation for the Nats to be in at the moment, walking the previous batter, and uh, Kenny Tyson's got four walks in the season, so definitely has some uh, control at the plate here. Well, one of the reasons for those walks is there's a lot of respect for him. You know, you, you don't want to just go up there and, and throw him pitches where he likes to hit him, because he tends to put him in the gaps. Fastball, and there's that, <laughs> just what we said, Justin, but a good catch by Anthony Rodriguez in center field, and that will do it. Here in the top of the first inning, we have no runs on no hits. And after half an inning complete, it is the South Florida Pirates 0, the West Kendall Nationals 0. You are watching AUBL Miami Baseball on the AUBL Miami Baseball Network. Tonight's game is brought to you by Prana Health. Prana Health is the place to go for sports injuries, Botox, any cosmetic surgeries, and any of your medical needs Please give them a call today, folks. Please call Prana Health and, and get a free consultation. Let them know that AUBL Miami sent you. Dave, I don't have any numbers. I don't know. Are you talking about on the lineup? Okay, folks, uh, we have just been uh, informed that Sean Emery has been injured on that play to second base and will be replaced for the South Florida Pirates. That is a big blow, Justin. Um, Matt Majewski is going to take his place and is playing left field right now, but boy, Justin, that is a huge blow for the South Florida Pirates. I mean, they needed a lot to go right tonight, and that's definitely something that went wrong. Yeah, losing that speed on the bases may definitely affect them down the road here, but again, it's all gonna come down to their pitching tonight, I believe. We know the Nats can hit, and uh, if they can keep that under control, they have a great shot of winning.
And that will bring up the blur, Yorandi Martinez up for the West Kendall Nationals to start the game. And Justin, last week, a uh, non-televised game for the Nationals, Yorandi Martinez did not swing at the first pitch. And here's Rudman's first pitch, and again, the blur, Yorandi Martinez with a violent swing through that one. Yeah, I don't think he's ever seen a pitch he doesn't want to take a hack at. Squares to bunt, but lets that one go, and Rudman threw that one a good two feet off of the plate. Yeah, Justin, I, I think he might even swing at some throws to first from the third baseman. I mean, he, <laughs> if he sees a baseball anywhere in the area, anywhere in the zip code, he's swinging at it. But uh, last week, Randy Martinez had an excellent game. He did start off the game with a double for the Nationals and did score. And that ball is fouled to the right side and looks like it's slicing out of play. So uh, one ball, two strike count now. Michael Rudman on the mound for the South Florida Pirates. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Michael Rudman, he is an AUBL Miami All-Star and a tremendous pitcher having a great season this season. Here's the blur, one and two to Rudman. Fastball, foul back, and a good at-bat from Yorandi Martinez to start the game for the West Kendall Nationals. And Justin, last week, as we were talking before about their, their game against the Day Diamondbacks, the Diamondbacks actually had a, a close game with the Nationals. Uh, the game was 7-6 in the eighth inning. And uh, here's the pitch, curveball, and Martinez pounds it into the ground, but foul. Nick Silva on the play at third base. But uh, the, the Dade Diamondbacks uh, played a very good game last week, had the tying run uh, coming in to score in the seventh inning, and that runner was thrown out by Eric Berkowitz, who happened to be playing center field for the, for the West Kendall Nationals. And you wanna talk about a 93 mile an hour fastball from center field, change up in the dirt. Here's the throw from Steiner over to first, and that is one out for the South Florida Pirates, and a big out for the South Florida Pirates. You know, normally as the game starts, you don't you don't qualify the first out of the game as a big out. But when you talk about your Andy Martinez and the damage he does on the bases, that is a very big out. Yeah, they don't want that speed anywhere on the bases while they're pitching, and it, it looks at least tonight like South Florida is not concerned about things being shot up the middle. The gap between short and second is monstrous. And I, I don't know if that's a, that's a scouting move um, for Yusbel Ortega because, you know, obviously at the plate now, manager Yusbel Ortega, um, you know, Juice gets a lot of base hits in between that short and third area and can also uh, hit the ball pretty smoothly to right field as well. Here's a fastball from Rudman and Ortega swings right through it. And I think this is a prelude to what we're going to see tonight, a lot of uh, swings and misses from the Nationals hitters. It's just a question of if they can catch up to that fastball from Rudman. Change up inside corner. Two strikes now on Usbel Ortega. Here's the pitch outside and high and that was a waste pitch Justin I think Rudman's trying to test the water and see what Ortega will swing at here's the two-strike pitch fought off by Ortega watch it folks that ball was flying around the stands. And the count now, one and two to use Bell Ortega. We are in the bottom of the first inning. No score here at FIU Stadium, South Florida Pirates and the West Kendall Nationals. Curveball from Rudman, just inside. A beautiful curveball by Michael Rudman. He didn't miss that by much, Jay. 
I speak from experience as I have faced Michael Rudman, and that is a jelly legger. That thing will turn your legs into absolute jelly. Another one, Ortega pounds it into the ground, but foul. And of course, for those of you who've been following our broadcasts, we have league MVP on deck, Anthony Bosa, swinging his beautiful pink bat tonight. Good at bat here from Usebell Ortega. Let's see what Rudman throws him. He's shown him the curveball. He's shown him the fastball. There's the curveball again in the dirt. And that's ball four. Ortega on with a walk. And Justin, just as we've talked about in prior broadcasts, you walk one of these top guys and then the big bats come up and uh, your attention gets divided. We saw this happen in the A's game where Anthony Bosa came up in the identical situation. Ortega had been walked and the, the pitcher in that, in that game, of course, was Ortega, um, was uh, diverted to first base. And the next thing you knew, mistake to Bosa, deposited over the 375 sign in left field. Fastball to Bosa, and he popped it up. A major league pop-up to Uli Pena at second base, and that'll be the second out of the inning. Bosa swinging at the first pitch, and Rudman went after him. Wow, what a matchup, Justin. Yeah, it might have been the bat, yeah. It may have been the bat that angered him, and he just went straight at him. And uh, as we've said a million times on these broadcasts, it doesn't get any easier after Bosa because you've got big Chris Wilma coming up to bat here. And uh, it's a little easier, you know, now that you have two outs, runner on first base, you know, we'll see if Ortega's going to steal, but um, I, I would say odds are he's not. I think they're going to let Wilma hit. <laughs> curveball to Wilma. And, and Justin, if Rudman has control like that over his curveball tonight, it is going to be a tough night for these Nationals hitters because it is hard to get Rudman off the mound. You know, he, he pitches complete games just about every time he pitches if he wants to. You know, they bring in Kenny Tyson to get him work, but, you know, getting... Oh, Wilma hits a massive ball, but way foul. A cricket shot, if you would. But, you know, we've, we've seen Michael Rudman in big games before, and I would classify this, obviously, as a very big game for the Pirates tonight. Um, the Pirates are 2-2-1, are two, two and one, and if they lose this game, they could be in some trouble tonight. Um, this is a must-win for the Pirates. Obviously, the Nationals are cruising. They're 7-0, and leading the division. Um, a loss for the Nationals wouldn't be as, uh, as difficult for them and, their, and the rest of their schedule as they're sitting in first place. Um, a loss will not take them out of first place, whereas the Pirates right now are actually in danger of making the playoffs. Right. right. A loss here tonight could definitely knock them out of the playoffs. Kid, don't want to fall behind 500. Foul back by Wilma. Right past our broadcast position here. But, you know, to finish that point, if Rudman is cruising and putting up zeros, I don't see how you take him out of the game. I, th I think you've got to keep Rudman in the game as long as possible. I think he's your best chance of victory tonight. Yeah, as long as he's got control over his pitches, he'll probably Big get swing from Wilma, then that will do it. Strike three. As Michael Rudman with a big strikeout of Chris Wilma, and after one complete inning here at FIU Stadium, the West Kendall Nationals zero, South Florida Pirates zero. You are watching AUBL Miami Baseball and AUBL Miami Baseball Network. And, you know, again, Justin, just to, uh, you know, continue that point about Rudman and how long he stays on the mound, uh, the South Florida Pirates played a 10-inning tie game with Team Venezuela, who, of course, was on our last broadcast. Um, and they played a 0-0 game 
in 10 innings, and unfortunately that game was called due to time, time restraints. Um, it did go the complete three hours, which of course in, in AUBL Miami, no inning can start after three hours under normal circumstances. These night games, of course, go a little bit longer. Our broadcast of games go a little bit longer. Um, we are, of course, dealing with a 12 o'clock curfew here, but the game, you know, having started at about uh, 7.45, we shouldn't be in any danger of this game uh, ending early tonight. I think we're gonna, I think this game will come to a conclusion one way or the other. We most likely will not see a tie tonight unless this game goes 18 innings or something. But, um, you know, that, that game between the South Florida Pirates and Team Venezuela was an, an amazing game. You had uh, the pitching of Team Venezuela, which we saw um, was uh, Rafael Suarez, um, Donato Calandriello, and Andres Ibars all pitching, uh, each of them pitching three or four innings, um, combining for a shutout. And then you had uh, Michael Rudman pitching uh, seven or eight innings for the, uh, for the Pirates, and Kenny Tyson uh, pitching, I think it was three innings for the Pirates and putting up zeros. So, you know, these, these two teams, you know, talking about Venezuela and the Pirates, are, are very, very even in talent when it comes to pitching and when it comes to their defense. And, and that's what's gonna make this another great game tonight is, you know, when the Nationals face these teams like the Nationals, the A's, the Pirates, you know, all of these types of teams really bring the best out of the Nationals. Chris Machado up to bat. First pitch, ball. Uh, Tucker Donahue. Tucker Donahue. Tucker Donahue. Tucker Donahue at bat for the South Florida Pirates. And uh, Tucker this season is hitting 600. Tucker having a great season this season uh, with a 667 on base percentage. Ball from Berkowitz, strike three, swung through by Tucker Donahue. A beautiful pitch from Eric Berkowitz. And that'll bring up Chris Machado for the South Florida Pirates with one out here in the, in the top of the second inning. We have a beautiful night for baseball, folks. The rain has gone away, and we have beautiful colors in the sky. We have blues and pinks and, and all sorts of colors. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful night here at FIU Stadium. Another curveball slicing foul and just foul from Chris Machado. Chris Machado has had 15 plate appearances this season, and um, although he's he's only got one hit, uh, it is a double, and Machado very capable of uh, of putting some power into the gaps here. Fastball outside, Machado fouls it back. Good at bat here from Chris Machado. He might not have a lot of hits on the season, but you sure got to throw him a lot of pitches to get him out of there. Curveball swung through again, and strike three. Eric Berkowitz with another strikeout. That is his fourth strikeout already, Justin. And that'll bring up Uli Pena, the second baseman. Uli's a longtime AUBL veteran and uh, also a former All-Star as the Pirates 
have many all-stars in their lineup here. <laughs> Curveball from Burko is just up high. I would say Berkowitz using that curveball a little more than we've uh, we've seen him in the last few weeks. Fastball again left up high. The Nationals players, including Eric Berkowitz, not very happy with that call. As you can see, Berkowitz almost dropped to his knees after umpire Alan Silverman called that a ball. Fastball, Pena hits it to right field, and that is just foul it was just foul as Uli Pena hit that ball into the corner and it was foul Justin by six inches yeah really not by much at all he, he almost had a distinct double on that one but just outside the line he got really good wood on Berkowitz's fastball as Berkowitz left that ball a little bit over the plate and again when when an umpire doesn't give you that call you get a little frustrated you start putting the ball a little bit closer into the plate and, and making it a little easier for these Pirates players to hit it. But when you have the, the great control that Eric Berkowitz does, that usually doesn't last very long. We have an excellent crowd here at FIU Stadium tonight. We have uh, several teams here with us tonight. We have a contingent from Boer, who of course will be part of our broadcast. Uh, they'll have several broadcasts with us this season. We have some teams that are coming next season that are here tonight. I see in the crowd Andy Salaya, uh, one of our teams that will be coming next season is the Westchester Orioles will be coming into AUBL Miami next season. Garcia on the outside part of the plate, but Berkowitz came inside. He may have crossed Garcia up on that one, Justin, as Garcia was way outside and that pitch was almost too far inside. Yeah, Jay, he jammed him inside. Even if he made contact, it wasn't going anywhere but straight down. Uli Pena with another good at bat here as these Pirates have been scrappy hitters. On deck for the Pirates, their catcher, Jeffrey Steiner. Foul back from Pena as he's getting wood on all these different pitches. Berkowitz threw that pitch at the letters, a fastball at the letters from Eric Berkowitz. This is a typical Nationals game, Justin. High drama. Good pitching, good defense. Curveball, pounded up the middle. Here's Ortega over to first. An easy play for Juice Ortega, and that will do it. Here on the top of the second inning, another nice inning from Eric Berkowitz. Two strikeouts and a ground out to shortstop. And after one and a half complete, the South Florida Pirates zero, the West Kendall Nationals Zero. You are watching AUBL Miami Baseball on the AUBL Miami Baseball Network. And Michael Rudman takes his warm-up tosses here. Coming up for the Nationals this inning, Gil Garcia leading off. Gil was player of the week last week, Justin, as against the Dade Diamondbacks. 
he was three for four with a massive home run to left center field, a ball that might still be going right now if we look out there. Um, Gil Garcia, player of the week last week for AUBL Miami. Garcia hitting 381 on the season. He has that home run we just spoke about, and he's also got seven RBIs. The money man, Tony Cash, will follow him. Tony hitting 375 with five RBIs, of course, none of which were bigger than that A's game where he hit that two RBI double that won the game for the West Kendall Nationals. And here's Gil Garcia, player of the week last week. And this is a really interesting matchup, Justin, because Garcia is one of those guys that can hit the fastball. And boy, can he hit the fastball. And even if Rudman pumps that thing up to 92-93, I don't think he can get it by Garcia. I don't think anyone can get it by him. I mean, he that the ball he hit last week was against a pitcher throwing in the upper 80s, about 88 miles an hour. And there it goes! There it goes to left field! Way back! And it's off the wall! Garcia was not running out of the gate, so I, I think Garcia thought it was gone, Justin. Yeah, he must have. I mean, barely made first base before the throw was relayed into the infield again. That ball was hammered to left field and hit the base of the wall on a hop. That ball went about 340 into the left field corner. Um, the... Uh, the left field foul pole is 325. That ball probably went about 330, 340, and was on a rope, Justin. That ball was hammered. And again, the Nationals showing their strength and flexing their muscles here early in the game. Here comes the money man, Tony Cash. Oh, and the money man was hit. This is not a good, this is not good for Michael Rudman as uh, he might have been rattled from that from that hit by Garcia. Yeah, he seems flustered after that shot, and we'll see if Garcia's base running uh, mistake comes into play here in this inning. I mean, he should have been at second before that ball ever came back to the infield. But he made second now anyway with that hit on Tony Cash, and we'll uh, see what happens with men on first and second. The money man looks okay. That ball hit him square in the back. I don't, I don't think, uh, and I don't think that was a fastball, Justin. I think that was a changeup. So that ball probably probably traveling in the lower 80s instead of the uh, lower 90s. And that'll bring up A-Rod, Anthony Rodriguez, the center fielder. Um, A-Rod has been blazing hot lately, which is why I also said this is not good news for Michael Rudman, because now with no outs, here come the Nationals. Curveball by Rudman, left up high, and now we're seeing that strike zone from Alan Silverman. Uh, as it's, it's been equal for both teams, he's not calling that high strike. Another curveball. I think Rodriguez was looking fastball there, Justin. He did not have his, his usual swing on that one. No, he sure didn't. And the umpire is going to keep the strike zone at least a little lower tonight. Anything up right around the top edge is not going to be called a strike. He's going to have to show a little command. Also, you know, Garcia is not one of the faster runners that the Nationals have either. So him being at second base is almost a little bit of a base clogger because Tony Cash does have speed at first. Fastball on the outside part of the plate and in the dirt, Jeffrey Steiner was able to come up with it. So the runners were not able to advance. So the count now two and one to Anthony Rodriguez of the West Kendall Nationals. We are in the bottom of the second inning. You are watching AUBL Miami Baseball at FIU Stadium. We are 0-0 here in the bottom of the second inning. Gil Garcia hit a shot off the left field wall to start the inning. And the money man, Tony Cash, was hit, was hit with a pitch. And that ball left up high on Anthony Rodriguez. So we are sitting here, Justin, with uh, no outs. 
runners on first and second, and now a three ball count on Anthony Rodriguez. Things are starting to get a little cloudy for the uh, for the Pirates here. Yeah, Jay Rudman's kind of painting himself into a corner at the moment. He needs to get through this batter. But we've seen this before from Rudman. And there's the changeup. Oh, and what a changeup it was. Rodriguez looking fastball and swung through it before the ball got halfway to him. Swung so hard the elbow brace went flying. Rudman, here's the pitch. Inside for ball four. Rudman starting to slow his pace a little bit here, slowing down, and that walk loads the bases for Juan Nunez and Justin, as we spoke about in our last broadcast, Juan Nunez, for those of you who are not have not seen our broadcast lately, uh, Juan, we discussed in our last broadcast and, and the broadcast before, won the game for the West Kendall Nationals with a home run against baseline uh, about three weeks ago. So uh, Juan Nunez, another guy, very capable of the long ball and with no outs here, and, and Rudman, primarily a fastball pitcher, this is not the matchup that the Pirates are looking for. No, with the bases loaded, this is not the guy I would want to be facing here. He's been on quite a streak recently and uh, one of the most dangerous hitters that the Nationals have in my opinion. And, and, and to use your expression, Rudman is painting himself into a corner here because you don't want to get behind Juan Nunez and have to throw him that fastball. Oh, we're gonna have a little meeting here at the mound, Jay. It's, it's gonna be a short one. I think Jeffrey Steiner just wants to get on the same page with Rudman. I don't, I don't think this is anything more than getting the signs straight. And possibly trying to calm Rudman down a little bit in this situation. It's not an enviable position. Not, you either. know, Justin, that's not a bad thing to think because um, Jeffrey Steiner is one of the most experienced catchers in AUBL Miami and knows very well what it takes mentally to, uh, to calm down Rudman. And he did, and that ball is fouled back. But boy, Justin, he gave him the high fastball. I am shocked. This is a great matchup here. You've got a power pitcher and a power hitter. And bases loaded. <laughs> Change of in for a strike. A beautiful pitch from Michael Rudman. And whatever Steiner said must have worked because he threw a beautiful pitch on that one. That ball was dancing. And he's got Nunez right where he wants him with a two strike count now. Fastball and Nunez fouls it straight back. A good at bat here from Juan Nunez as he's not going down quietly. Rudman going right after him. Ball in the dirt. Nunez does not go after it, and the count now evens up at two and two. And folks, you are in for a treat because after this inning, we will have Andy Salaya interviewed here on the AUBL Miami Baseball Network. scores the first run of the game for the West Kendall Nationals on a wild pitch from Michael Rudman. Rudman uncorks a wild pitch at the worst possible time, Justin. As Rudman has basically put himself in this position 
you know, Gil Garcia had that big hit off the wall that was only a single, but ever since then, it's been all Michael Rudman putting runners on. You've got the, the hit batter, the base on balls, and now the wild pitch has, has actually brought in a run. Yeah, so, this could unravel quickly here, Jim, real quick. So be careful and, and hang on to your seats here because uh, we still have no outs. And power hitting Juan Nunez up. Big lead off the second base from Anthony Rodriguez. Curveball. And it's too high for ball four. And now another walk from Michael Rudman. Loads the bases. So with no outs, you've got Busy Paredes coming up. And, you know, Busy, Busy's got a lot of speed, but he's also got a small strike zone. And, you know, you've got Michael Rudman, who's been walking people. And now you've got Busy Paredes with a small strike zone. He could very well walk a run in here if he's not careful. Yeah, with the bases loaded the way it is, you can't afford to walk this batter. You gotta go right at him. I'll be shocked if he throws him anything other than a fastball for a strike. Paredes actually showed bunt there. An odd move from Paredes as a bunt is probably not the play here, Justin. You, if you're catcher Jeffrey Steiner, you say thank you very much and step on home and, and maybe even get a double play out of it. Unless, Justin, it was just a ploy to get the bat in front of, uh, in front of the face of Jeffrey Steiner or to, to, to mess the strike zone up for Michael Rudman and have him throw a ball, maybe he had no intention of bunting at all. It could be, or just a distraction considering our one run tonight has come on a wild pitch. Easily could be angling for another one. That ball way up high from Michael Rudman. And, and Justin, I'll tell you another thing that's interesting here is the pitcher, Michael Rudman, is also the manager. So who's going to take him out? You know, it, it, sometimes that's the hardest thing is, you know, when you're the manager and the pitcher to know when to come out. Here comes the play at the plate, and the money man, Tony Cash, comes in with the second run of the game. Another wild pitch from Michael Rudman. A changeup in the dirt that Jeff Steiner was unable to handle. A very tough pitch to handle. Yeah, the wheels are coming off the train here, dude. They are certainly coming off. Second wild pitch so far. And that puts the Nationals up two to nothing. And we still have no outs here in the bottom of the second inning. And the Nationals now again with runners on second and third. Busy Paredes at the plate. Fastball in for a strike. A good pitch by Michael Rudman. Let's see if he fights back here, Justin. If he can get out of this somehow with only giving up those two runs, the Pirates still have a puncher's chance here. Oh, yeah, that would be a victory for uh, Rudman if he could get through this inning. That's going to be tough, though. I mean, when, you, when you've got no outs, runners on second and third, it is a tough situation, and Rudman taking a little too much time. Busy Paredes calling time because he's, he's standing there too long at the plate. Curveball, low for a ball. And I, Justin, I don't agree with the pitch calls. The I don't agree with the changeup, the curveball. I think you got to throw fastball, fastball, and more fastball here to Busy Paredes. I think you got to make him beat you. Curveball, fouled off, and another curveball. You know, I am, I am very surprised at the pitch calls here. I don't know if this is Jeffrey Steiner. I don't know if this is Rudman calling these pitches. But no matter who's calling them, Justin, you got to wonder if, if they're making a mistake here calling all these off-speed pitches to Busy Paredes because a lot of them are falling in for a ball. I think the concern now is just to keep control and keep it uh, in the catcher's mid at this point. No more pass balls here. Yeah, that's a good point, Justin. We've had two pass balls that have led to runs here. Fastball swung through by Busy Paredes, and that's the first out of the inning. And just as we spoke about, when he throws that fastball, it is tough to hit. So with one out in the inning, that'll bring up the blur, Yurandi Martinez. So the lineup has rolled over here for the West Kendall Nationals in the bottom of the second inning.
And this is a guy you definitely do not want to mess with. And with first base open, I would not be shocked if he pitches around the blur. Change up on the outside part of the plate and Martinez swings through it. But that, that pitch was never being hit anywhere. That was a very, very hard pitch to hit, Justin. Yeah, I don't think he's actually going to try to pitch around him. And as we've seen, Martinez is going to swing at anything that's uh, anywhere near home plate. Does it give him the fastball? I don't think he's going to give him the fastball here, Justin. You've, you've got runners on second and third with one out. Looks like and he's looking for that outside corner according to where uh, Steiner's position at the moment. Well, he's moving, he jumps back in the side. Base hit up the middle for the blurry Randy Martinez. One run will score. Two runs are coming in. Here's the throw to the plate and he is safe. He's safe at the plate. Juan Nunez scores the fourth run of the game. Yorandi Martinez with a two RBI hit. And the West Kendall Nationals now lead four to nothing. And that's the point I brought up earlier, Jimmy. That gap between second and shortstop is enormous. And Yorandi Martinez took full advantage of that. Shot it right up the middle and knocked in two RBIs with that run. The blur, Yorandi Martinez with a two RBI hit here in the bottom of the second inning. And the West Kennel Nationals are threatening to blow this game open. Looks like the Pirates have taken notice of that and shortened that gap in between second and short now. Yeah, Rudman's coming out of his game there. He might be coming a little unglued here, Justin. Popped up. It's gonna be a tough play. And Martinez was so far off of first base that they almost were able to double him up. Luckily, he's got that speed to get back there just in time. And up steps Anthony Bosa with the pink bat. We'll see if he can get a hold of the ball this time. And we'll also see if uh, Martinez tries to take a little lead here off first base. Put some pressure on Rudman. And he's checked back to first. If Martinez is healthy at first base, he's got to be taking off on this pitch. Oh, come on. And, I, and I don't think you, you got to, I think you got to pitch around Bosa, Justin. I know you don't want to, and I know you don't want to give up another walk, but I think you got to pitch around him here. Popped up, foul, and out of play. And that did not sound good. That sounded like a smashed window to me, Justin. Yeah, it sure did, Jay. Hopefully that was just a tarp or something over from the side of the stadium. Bosa with a big swing. Rubman apparently is going to challenge him at every opportunity. And Bosa with another big swing, and he is struck out, and Rubman is through the inning. It would have been much worse for the Pirates. Let's we'll see if they can regroup with the bats now. And that will do it here in the bottom of the second inning, but not without major damage done from the West Kendall Nationals. Some of it, of course, Justin was self-inflicted from the Pirates, but the West Kendall Nationals, after two innings complete, 
leading the South Florida Pirates four to nothing on the AUBL Miami Baseball Network. for the top of the third. Berkowitz now ahead in the count, one and two. Jeffrey Steiner having an at-bat here against Eric Berkowitz, and that shot goes foul on the right side. Justin Jeffrey Steiner, more known for his work behind the plate than at the plate, but um, can, be, can be a good contact hitter as well, and, and a tough out for Eric Berkowitz. But just as I say that, he swings at a pitch that's two feet out of the strike zone, unfortunately, and Jeffrey Steiner goes down on strikes. And at this pace, Berkowitz is just gonna mow him down all night. So that'll swing us back up to Majewski. Chad Lambert comes into the plate for the South Florida Pirates.
little confusion in the South Florida Pirates lineup here as they are hitting 10 batters here tonight. Uh, Chad Lambert at the plate for the South Florida Pirates. As Justin, you were you were talking about Majewski, who had taken the place of uh, Sean Emery, and uh, he will be on deck for the South Florida Pirates as the Pirates are hitting 10 batters here tonight. Curveball, fisted down the right side, and that will fall, but foul, just foul. Juan Nunez and Busy Paredes unable to catch up to that one. Tony Cash also came in from right field, but uh, all three of them converged. None of them were able to come up with it, and that ball landed about six inches foul. Yeah, maybe six at the most. From here, I actually thought that was fair, but uh, refs were right on top of it. First base umpire was right on top of it. <laughs> Fastball just missed the outside corner there as Eric Berkowitz looking to paint the corners here as he gets these hitters down in these two strike counts and then goes to work. Curveball, hits to the left side. Juice Ortega down to a knee, up with it, over to first. A nice looking play from Juice Ortega at shortstop. Yeah, well played off an awkward bounce there to the shortstop. Ortega had to go into the hole to his right, which is of course Justin away from first base and was able to, in one motion, come up with the ball and get the ball and get rid of the ball over to first base and made it look easy. Majewski now in for Sean Emery and this is now rolling over the top of the lineup here for the South Florida Pirates. And that ball's hit to right center and it will get down. It will get down. Majewski on his way to second base and he will be in easily. Stand up double, Jay. Majewski, the substitute, has come in and on the first pitch, hit the ball into right center field for a double. And one of the most solid hits they've had off of uh, Berkowitz tonight, Jay. However, now with two outs, the Pirates, um, even though they have a runner in scoring position, it is a two out rally, which is much different than a one out or zero out rally. Um, however, now with the top of the lineup rolling over, we have Brian Netwig coming in, who's one of the bigger threats for the Pirates. Majewski leads off second. Here comes the pitch from Berkowitz outside. Berkowitz does not want to walk Netwig here because after Netwig comes Bino Garcia, Nick Silva, and Kenny Tyson, and any of those three guys can hurt you. Fastball, in for a strike. A nice pitch from Eric Berkowitz as he's got a nice tail on that fastball tonight, Justin. Really good movement. Oh, yeah, he's in total control here. All night long, he's been painting anywhere he wants to, inside, outside. I think he's found the ceiling of the strike zone tonight as well. Just on the black of the outside corner, and that one also a strike, Justin, as Netwig is talking to himself up there. He he can't buy a break. Majewski leads off of second. We've got two outs here in the top of the third inning. Here's the pitch. Curveball fouled out to the right side and out of play. Berkowitz has to be careful here because Netwig will sit on that curveball and will hit it a long way if he throws another one. If he throws the curveball, Justin, it's gotta be out of the strike zone. It's gotta be a pitch that's unhittable. Fastball, fisted down the right side, barehanded play by Juan Nunez as that ball took a tricky hop 
It had a lot of English on it, and Juan Nunez, with his bare hand, picks up the ball and makes an easy play over to first base for the third out of the inning. Two outstanding defensive field plays for the Kennel Nationals here in the third inning. Juan Nunez with a great play for the West Kennel Nationals to end it, and that will do it here in the top of the third inning. The Pirates again put up zero runs, and after two and a half innings complete, it is the South Florida Pirates zero, the West Kendall Nationals four on the AUBL Miami Baseball Network. <laughs> Folks, we're still waiting on that interview we talked about with Andy Salaya, as uh, he has been unable to get to our broadcast booth at this point. We're hoping, we're hoping to get him over here by next inning. <laughs> But we know we know Andy's very busy here in the crowd tonight. He's got he's got many people here with him, and he's he's been detained, unfortunately, uh, up until now. We're hoping maybe in the next inning or so we can get him over here. But in the meantime, we have a great ball game, Justin, as those four runs for the West Kendall Nationals really changed the complexion of this game. Yeah, with Berkowitz pitching the way he is, that that could be just enough for the Nationals tonight. Yeah, I, that's a good point, Justin. You know, we're going to have to see this next trip through the middle of the lineup for the Pirates because coming up next inning, you've got Bino Garcia, Nick Silva, Kenny Tyson, Tucker Donahue, and Chris Machado, who up until now really haven't done much yet, but are very, very capable, and the Nationals have to show them respect and will have to continue to show them respect all night if they're going to keep this score intact. Michael Rudman still on the mound, Justin. I, and I think, you know, when we just had that discussion earlier about, you know, him also being the manager, does he come out of the game? Does he know when to come out of the game? Um, I think Rudman, in his own mind, and probably in the mind of his teammates, believe that he's the best option out there. And even if he's, even if he's giving up runs, he may still be the best option that they have. I don't know that Kenny Tyson can necessarily come in and, and do what Rudman can do. And, and while Kenny Tyson, you know, typically doesn't walk anybody, um, he does not have the, the 90 mile an hour fastball that Redman has. And uh, I'd be I'd be a little nervous at what these Nationals hitters would do to him. Well, the Pirates are definitely playing deeper in the outfield with Chris Wilmoth coming up to the plate. Yeah, I don't think they can play deep enough here, Justin. I think if uh, if they allowed him to play outside of the wall, they would. And there's another one that gets by Jeff Steiner. Fortunately for the Pirates, no runners were on, and that's just a ball, uh, ball one to Chris Wilma. And again, this is a guy that you do not want to get behind in the count on. You don't want to get into these fastball counts because Wilma, another guy who can deposit it over the wall. Curveball again, and Wilma should have known that was coming. <laughs> he should know better, Justin. They're not just, just going to give him a fastball on that 1-0 and count. No, they're going to make him reach for any pitch that he can try to get a hold of. And they're going to definitely make him earn it, this at bat. And the, and the Pirates, of course, know Chris Wilmoth very well because Chris Wilmoth played for the Pirates two seasons ago. Curveball in the dirt, and Wilmoth swings right through it for strike three. And an easy out there as Wilmoth, typically not an easy out, was an easy out on that one. The Pirates know Wilmoth very well because uh, Wilmoth, was a big part of the Pirates' success two seasons ago. Well, that might give uh, Rudman a little confidence here as Garcia steps to the plate. Ball outside to Gil Garcia. And, Garcia and that's a, a fair ball. Gil Garcia again with another hit. And that ball's fired into second base. 
and Garcia with no chance for a double on that one. You know, Justin, on the last one, we thought Garcia had a chance for a double uh, as he hit it off the wall and just didn't run it out. This time, uh, he didn't have a chance as the left fielder got that ball in very, very quickly. Um, the left fielder, of course, the replacement for, for Sean Emery was uh, Majewski out there. Um, Majewski, of course, had that double last inning, that nice double to right center field, and also showed a very nice arm on that last play. And that will bring up the money man, Tony Cash. This is where we saw all the damage last time. Garcia leading off with a hit, and then the money man last time was hit by the pitch to start the inning. Curveball in the dirt. Steiner able to come up with that one as Rudman flirting again with more wild pitches, throwing that curveball in the dirt. And that, and you know, the thing with his curveball, Justin, has so much spin on it, so much rotation that Steiner's having a hard time handling it back there tonight. Yeah, he's got to learn to get a handle on that somehow. I mean, it's got a lot of movement on it, but he can't allow it to get past him anymore. Curveball again in the dirt. And Rudman now behind the money man, Tony Cash. So, uh, same, same pattern we saw last inning. Uh, the pattern being Garcia leads off with a single, and then uh, Rudman struggles with the money man, Tony Cash. Fastball. Alan Silverman says, yes, he swung. And the money man, Tony Cash, now a two and one count. I think, I think the money man's getting frustrated, Justin, after getting hit by a pitch with the first at-bat on the first pitch, and now seeing two balls here in this at-bat. He just wants a fastball to swing at. Curveball in for a strike. That wasn't the strike he wanted to see. He wants that fastball. He wants it very bad. Tony Cash up there thinking, you know, this guy's got a 90 mile an hour fastball. I want to see it. Curveball in the dirt. Steiner with another good stop back there. And even though there have been a couple pass balls, Steiner has had an excellent game behind the plate. We are in the bottom of the third inning here at FIU Stadium with the West Kendall Nationals leading the South Florida Pirates four to nothing. The Nationals scoring all four runs last inning. Cash swung right through that curveball, and that is a that is a frustration swing from Tony Cash because he just wants to participate in this game. He doesn't want to be walked. He doesn't want to be hit by a pitch. He wants to hit the ball. Yeah, big strikeout for Rudman though. If he's going to have any chance of settling down, he's got to pick it up right here and now. And with two outs, <clears throat> Gil Garcia will come off the bases as Gil is catching tonight, and Tony, the money man, Tony Cash, will take his place over there. So Anthony Rodriguez will come to the plate here in the bottom of the third inning for the West Kendall Nationals. Fastball in the outside corner for a strike. A nice pitch from Michael Rudman. <clears throat> Again, folks, we have a great crowd here tonight at FIU Stadium. Fastball up high to Anthony Rodriguez. And uh, again, Justin, we, we caught a break tonight as uh, our last telecast was uh, rained out. Um, we were a little nervous about the weather tonight as our four o'clock game did experience a small weather delay as there was a little bit of lightning, a little bit of rain, um, but the, and a big swing from Rodriguez, but the weather cleared up. Uh, the rain, uh, not much of a factor, a little bit of a quick dry applied to the field, um, but not much, and, uh, and we, and we have beautiful, clear night for baseball. <laughs> Fastball swung through by Rodriguez for strike three as Rudman went right after him and Anthony Rodriguez unable to catch up to that high 92 mile an hour fastball. Michael Rudman struck out the side as three strikeouts in the inning, sandwiched in between a uh, Gil Garcia base hit. As, as Justin, no one can get Gil Garcia out these days. I mean, last week, he was three for four with a home run. 
this this game he's already two for two with one ball that I thought off the crack of his bat was going to be over the wall. Um, he is red, red hot right now. That's that. If I'm the Pirates, I want to do anything I can not to pitch to him right now. Yeah, on that second shot, he had definitely a little more uh, pep in his step. Maybe, maybe the manager uh, Ortega said a little something to him and uh, got him to move a little faster towards first base. Had no chance of making the second, but nonetheless. Uh, and folks, we are we are lucky that we have walking by us right now, Uli Pena. Uli Pena, the second baseman for the South Florida Pirates, unfortunately unable to uh, speak on our broadcast, but uh, Uli Pena just came by our broadcast booth. And we have a lot of special guests here tonight as we have a large crowd here at FIU Stadium, a great game here between the West Kendall Nationals and the South Florida Pirates. And Juan Nunez also coming by. Juan, if we can just have a quick word with you. We've got Juan Nunez in the booth. Juan playing first base tonight and uh, also in the batting lineup for the West Kendall Nationals. Juan, real quick, uh, while we have you up here, 4-0 um, lead for the Nationals tonight. What, what has it been like in the, in the dugout? What has it been like around the team tonight? Give us, give us a little uh, peek behind the curtain into the, the attitude of the West Kendall Nationals tonight. Well, the Pirates are here. They're here to challenge us, and we we're here ready to play. That's pretty much what it's coming down to. It's very, we're, we're always relaxed. We're always having fun. So we know we have to buckle up and get everything going quickly. So this is a good team. This is a good pitcher, and we got him early. A lot of respect from Juan Nunez. Um, and, and, of course, he's mentioning the pitcher Michael Rudman, who the Nationals have faced before. Um, what's it like up there facing that 92-mile-an-hour fastball from Michael Rudman and that big breaking sweeping curveball? He's not gonna. He's not gonna let you go easy. So you gotta take whatever he gives you, and, and honestly, you gotta do whatever, get, get whatever he uh, throws at you, and and make sure you put it in play. It's all about putting the ball in play for him. Well said, Juan. Thanks for coming into the booth and, and being with us tonight. Uh, Bino Garcia steps in for the South Florida Pirates again. That was Juan Nunez for the West Kendall Nationals, and we appreciate Juan stepping by our broadcast booth. Fastball hit right back at Berkowitz and in the center field for a base hit. And it was only the athleticism of Eric Berkowitz that enabled him to get out of the way of that bullet from Bino Garcia. <laughs> and Justin, that's what we were talking about before with uh, the middle of this South Florida Pirates lineup. They all hit the ball very well, and, the, and the Nationals have to have a lot of respect for the middle of this lineup. You know, even though it's a 4-0 lead, you know, the Pirates put a couple hits together here, and that lead could, could shrink very quickly. Curveball from Berkowitz, a beauty on the outside corner for a strike. So now we've got Bino Garcia leading off of first base, and Nick Silva at the plate on deck for the Pirates is Kenny Tyson. Another curveball, and yes he did. Yes he went, says umpire Alan Silverman. Little chatter here from the Nationals as Silva now down 0-2. Garcia leads off first and Silva calls time. Silva just had uh, knee surgery, Justin, about uh, three months ago and was ahead of schedule in coming back to play. Fastball pounded into the dirt, over to Busy Paredes, and he only has one play, which is to first base. So Silva able to move the runner over in a sacrifice-like hit from Nick Silva, gets Bino Garcia over to second base, and that will bring up Kenny Tyson with one out here in the bottom of, in the top of the fourth inning. Oh. 
Pass ball to Tyson, and another pounded ball into the dirt, and Busy Paredes over to first. Another easy play for Ruben Paredes at second base, and that will bring up Tucker Donahue with two outs, and now the runner, Bino Garcia, over to third base, but with two outs, uh, you you got to figure Berkowitz will just be focused on the batter. Um, and coming in for Tucker Donahue is going to be Isaac Seon. Isaac, also a very dangerous hitter. In for a strike against Isaac. Welcome to the game, says home plate umpire Alan Silverman. gets away from Gil Garcia. Here comes the play at the plate and there will be no play at the plate. That will go down as a passed ball from Gil Garcia as a slider from Eric Berkowitz unable to be held by Gil Garcia. And the Pirates get their first run of the game, a gift, Justin. Yeah, absolutely a gift. It makes up for one of the two that the uh, Pirates threw past the plate earlier in the game. But you take all the pressure off for Berkowitz and this batter here. True. Um, you've got Isaac Sayon now up with no runners on and two outs. Curveball in for a ball. And that pitch uh, up high up, up high a little bit. Um, looked like it was around the letters. But uh, unfortunately in AUBL Miami, we do not have the K zone as we do in, in the Fox Sports games. Fastball hits a right field, and that's going to get down for a base hit. And all the substitutes for the Pirates are coming in swinging as Isaac Sayon comes in with a base hit for the South Florida Pirates. And that'll bring up Chris Machado now with two outs and a runner on first base as Isaac Sayon came in as a substitute and promptly deposited a base hit into right field. <clears throat> Fouled straight back. Curveball left alone by Machado. A good take there from Chris Machado. This game got a little more interesting, Justin. We are now four to one here in the top of the fourth inning. Big swing and a miss. Garcia snaps a throw to first. <laughs> An acrobatic play from MVP Anthony Bosa over there. Yeah, lucky that didn't get past him. Dude. Yeah, very lucky, Justin, as that ball was thrown a good four feet off of the first baseline. And the uh, normally not so acrobatic Anthony Bosa made a very nice play over there at first base. Fastball in for a strike, and that will do it. And Machado very upset with himself as he knew that was strike three. That ball right down the middle of the plate, Justin. We are in the middle of the fourth inning. About to come to the bottom of the fourth inning with the West Kendall Nationals leading the South Florida Pirates 4-1. to one. You are watching AUBL Miami Baseball on the AUBL Miami Baseball Network.
Juan Nunez steps to the plate to start off the bottom of the fourth inning. Takes going outside for ball one. Spin shot from Nunez. Rainbow shot should be an easy out. And it is. A tough play there for Uli Pena as that ball hung up in the air for what seemed like forever, Justin, as Juan Nunez, everything he does is big, and, and that was a big, big pop-up from Juan Nunez. And that will leave us to Ruben Paredes. Swing, foul tip back. Doesn't have a huge average on the season, and that might be why. He seems to swing at uh, anything close here. And Rudman with a high, high left foot just floating up there for him. I have it. He goes at 1 1. Redis takes the ball, low and outside. 2 and 1. Oh, way inside. And I'll take the count of three and one here to start off the bottom of the fourth. Perez showing some, uh, some patience here at the plate. And Perez going to take first base on the walk. And Steiner is going to meet with Rudman, have a quick little chat, see if he can settle him down here. And Yurandi Martinez steps to the plate, a man on first. Again, Rudman seems to be having a little trouble finding the strike zone here in this inning. Another one low and outside. And the blur with a little dinker. And it cannot be handled. A tough play there from Bino Garcia. Unfortunately, unable to come up with that one as the blur, Yarandi Martinez, Justin, always putting pressure on the defense with his speed. Yeah, it was just a little blooper, but he had enough speed to just uh, get over there to first. Now men on first and second for Juice Ortega. And, and Justin, this is exactly what we always are concerned about with the West Kendall Nationals as these, these players getting on base and then the big bats coming up as you've got Bosa, Wilma, and, and the rest of the Nationals coming up, all of them with power, all of them... Very, very good hitters. And Steiner and Rodman with another meeting. And Ortega looks at a low and outside pitch. And, and you really don't want to walk Juice Ortega here. Rudman's got to come after him with the fastball. And that's a shot. That's a base hit. Here comes Moranis around third. 
Here's the play at the plate. Tyson with a throw, and they'll get Ortega in a rundown, but there's nobody at first base. Here's another play at the plate, and he's safe. He is safe. The Nationals have scored two more runs as Juice Ortega comes through with a two RBI hit. Juice Ortega, the manager of the West Kendall Nationals, hit a flare into right field at right fielder Kenny Tyson that got down for a base hit, scoring Busy Paredes, and then the throw came in, and Juice Ortega looked to be hung up in a rundown, but with nobody covering first base, was able to get back easily. The throw then came to the plate to try to catch Yarandi the Blur Martinez, but it was too late, and this ball is popped up to the right side, Uli Pena drifting over and makes the catch. Yeah, it's six to one in the bottom of the fourth here. Rudman's really gonna have to figure out how long he wants to stay in this game. And that will bring up Chris Wilma, who's always a threat to knock it out. So now with uh, two outs here and a runner on first, change up in on Wilma, and he is still yet to see a fastball tonight. Wilma and Tony Cash have not seen one fastball yet tonight. No, with the power either one of those guys have, I don't expect them to see too many fastballs. Runman needs to gain some control and try to uh, get them to swing at some crazy pitches. Ortega leads off first. He finally got the fastball and did not swing at it. I think he was looking for the curveball that time, Justin. And he was surprised to finally see it. He just uh, didn't expect it at all. Having a little conversation with both Jeff Steiner and home plate umpire Alan Silverman. Probably saying something to the effect of, that's, okay, that's what his fastball looks like. There's the curveball, pounded into the ground, and an easy play for Nick Silva, and that will do it, but not without the damage done again, as the West Kendall Nationals adding two more runs, and now lead the South Florida Pirates by a score of six to one. You're watching AUBL Miami Baseball Network. So we've had two two RBI hits tonight for the West Kendall Nationals and two pass balls for the West Kendall Nationals uh, scoring. The South Florida Pirates scored on a pass ball. Um, so there, tonight, to recap the scoring, there have been three runs scored on a wild pitch or pass ball, depending on how, the, how you want to score it. And then you have uh, two two RBI hits, one by the blurry, Randy Martinez, and won by manager Yusbel Ortega and the West Kendall Nationals in firm control of this game. The score now six to one as we come into the top of the of the fifth inning. We will start, we will stop and restart our broadcast, and we will be back in one minute. Folks, just reset your browsers and we will see you in 30 seconds. <laughs> 